Now it's my turn to show you around the geometry garden. My name is Escher, and I was a Dutch artist in the 20th century. Geometry was a constant source of inspiration for me. I'm a past master in the art of drawing fantastic tilings. Look at this self-portrait in a spherical mirror. One of my most famous drawings shows lizards drawn on a plane that managed to break out of the paper. Now, perched on high, they contemplate their previous existence as flat life. To prepare ourselves for life in four dimensions, we are going to use the ideas behind both my engraving and a little book published at the end of the 19th century by Edwin Abbott, an English clergyman called Flatland. Let's try to explain to these flat beings, these creatures live trapped forever in a plane, what our everyday life in three dimensions is like. Let's imagine that one of these lizards manages to escape his miserable existence for a moment and climbs out and up onto a viewpoint looking down on his world. How would he explain to his fellow reptiles the existence of objects in three dimensions? As a first attempt, he could try to pass some three-dimensional objects through his flat world. Here, for example, is a tetrahedron with its four faces passing through the lizard's plane. The flat creatures see a green triangle appear suddenly, then gradually shrink away. This is all they see, since their senses are entirely restricted, and they cannot perceive anything outside of their plane. Each time that the lizards see these green polygons appear, change shape, and disappear again, they might imagine the form of the object that has just crossed their plane. To see how hard it is to visualize the form of a geometric body from its cross sections, try to guess what is crossing through the plane now. A tetrahedron. And now it was a cube. Of course, you have to remember that these lizards don't have the same perspective we have. All they see is a sequence of polygons, and they'll have to develop an understanding of depth in order to fully appreciate the shape of the body. And now what? An octahedron with its eight faces. And an icosahedron. It's a solid with 20 faces. And finally, the dodecahedron. 12 faces, 20 vertices, and 30 edges. Now we're going to show you some cross sections, and only cross sections, and you have to guess the polyhedron hiding behind them.
That was a tetrahedron. That was a cube. It's getting hard, isn't it? You see now that these creatures stuck in two dimensions have to develop good geometric intuition if they want to understand something of the third dimension that we take for granted. We'll have just the same kind of problems to get a feeling for the fourth dimension.